And joining me now, former State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortegas to talk about all this. Morgan, good to see you. Thanks, Rob. Of course. Yeah, you worked in the Trump administration. Uh, Democrats, of course, screamed Trump was a Russian asset the entire time he was in office. How comical is all of that with what we have seen this week from the Biden administration? Well, Rob, we were actually, from a policy perspective, uh, over at the State Department, led by Mike Pompeo, we were quite tough on, on Russia. And I can tell you that I sat with Mike Pompeo in multiple uh, meetings uh, with the Russians throughout the two years that I worked for him. And, and you can just, your audience can trust me that, that he was incredibly resolute, incredibly tough, and he stood up for American values. Um, conversely, it, it, this decision uh, not to uh, uh, sanction the people behind Nord Stream 2. So this is a pipeline um, that will essentially make Germany and other parts of Europe dependent on Russian gas. Why is mm -hmm. that important? Well, first of all, it seems like Biden uh, loves any foreign pipelines, but not American pipelines. So we've seen the cancellation <laughs> of the Keystone Pipeline. United States. Of course, we're energy independent now, and uh, a lot of people see that as a big error. We also saw just a few weeks ago, and your audience will know this well, we all saw gas prices shoot up around the United States uh, because a Russian entity, now Putin claims this is a private entity, not affiliated with the government. I have my skepticism. Right. But nothing. A Russian entity hacked a pipeline, uh, which took our infrastructure down and, and really messed with the U.S. oil supply for several weeks. You also saw this private company, American company, pay the Russians reportedly a $5 million ransom. So why does all of that matter? What, what does all of this mean? It means that we're canceling U.S. energy pipelines while we are rewarding uh, the Russians. And, and by not enforcing these sanctions, we're allowing them to build their pipeline, which is going to make uh, Europe dependent on the Russians for gas. And by the way, I mean, I have so many points that I could make on this, but but why would we do this a week after the colonial pipeline hack, uh, yeah. a week after gas prices go to the United States? It's Well, and I, I want to bring that up. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous to give Russia a gift like this just a couple mm -hmm. weeks after a Russian group, and you say you have your skepticisms, I think anybody uh, has skepticisms. I think a lot of people think it's very obvious that that Russian hacking group is somehow tied to Putin. How could a group like that exist in Russia without that government knowing it is the big question. So, I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, I think we look just so pathetically weak uh, in front of Vladimir Putin right now. And you've got Anthony Blinken there, who's gonna capitulate to Russia again, uh, and we're seeing it happen. It's just, it's such an embarrassment of foreign policy. Well, what's really odd as well is that the Obama administration uh, and President Biden, when he was vice president, was opposed yeah. to the to pipeline. Congress, both both parties, have long been opposed to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So where is the constituency that is pro-Russian uh, expansion of their gas uh, pipelines? I mean, it's, it's, it's bizarre. It's hard to go into a meeting uh, with Putin and be taken seriously as the tough guy. So whenever you're allowing them, uh, when you're giving them this massive economic um, incentivization. So, uh, you know, as you said, Blinken is meeting with Lavrov, his foreign minister counterpart. Right now, let me tell you, Putin may be tough, Lavrov is really tough. That guy has been around for a long time. He was uh, in the foreign ministry before Putin. He'll probably be there afterwards. Mm -hmm. I saw Mike Pompeo go toe to toe with him uh, plenty of times, and you know, in our private meetings. And uh, if you are if you are blustering behind an empty deck of cards, the Russians will sniff it out in two seconds. Very interesting. I want to play something here. Uh, this is from. Antony Blinken, Secretary of State, his confirmation hearing. Let's take a listen. First of all, President-elect strongly agrees with you that Nord Stream 2 is a bad idea, uh, and he's been very clear about that. Um, I need to look at the, the, uh, the actual legislation. I'm determined to uh, do whatever we can uh, to prevent that completion. So we, know, we know Blinken's not much of a Secretary of State. I mean, we've expected that. But he said in the confirmation hearing, they don't like this. What on earth changed? Why would they just roll over on this? What reason could they possibly have, especially after what we just saw with our own pipeline? So I think what changed is a question that uh, should be asked by all media outlets, not just yours, and should be asked by the U.S. Congress. Uh, we, there should be much more coverage on this, obviously, 
uh, the Congress and a lot of the media are obsessed with what's going on in, in Israel right now, as they should mm -hmm. be. I mean, that's an incredibly important uh, issue. Uh, but but it seems, you know, there are a lot of very odd things about the timing uh, of this announcement uh, right before uh, Blinken is meeting with Lavrov before reportedly reportedly that Biden and Putin will meet in June. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I expect more members of Congress to hold the administration accountable for this. I mean, this is yet another example. Now, Rob, you pay attention to everything. I'm mostly focused on foreign policy. But yep. this is just another example of where Blinken testified in Congress to one set of policies and another are different. And the outcome is different. So if you look even, for yep. example, at a where Blinken promised the Senate in his confirmation hearings that we they would go for a quote unquote longer and stronger deal with Iran, that they would work to curb their malign behavior, their support for terrorism in the region. Uh, that, according to media reports, has just been completely thrown to the wind. The Iranians are demanding uh, to release all sanctions. So not to go down a rabbit hole, but there's now a pattern of saying things before Congress and testifying to certain policy actions on the foreign sure. policy side. Uh, that don't actually come to fruition. And uh, I would like to and see wish, more accountability media, yeah. more accountability for Congress. And you won't. They're going to protect it because the media likes what they're doing. And that's what we've learned about the mainstream media as they have turned hard left. It's something else to watch. Um, and it's, I wish I could say I'm surprised by what's happening with the State Department, but I don't think anybody, you know, at least people that looked at it logically had much expectations, much high expectations. Uh, for Anthony Blinken. I want to talk about Israel before we let you go. Uh, in his call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today, Biden conveyed that he expected a significant de-escalation uh, today on the path to a ceasefire. Um, this, as, uh, of course, Russia is telling Israel that more civilian casualties in Gaza are unacceptable. So what do you make of Russia sticking? I mean, obviously, they like to get into things. You think Russia really cares about any of that stuff? They, they have some kind of motive that's personal. What's your response to that? What does this mean? Well, it's seen by the, you know, almost decade of uh, what, what the civil war that's gone on in Syria and the fact that Russia has just indiscriminately, you know, bombed uh, civilians in Syria. Of course. Um, uh, amongst a million other examples in history, uh, it's sort of laughable that the Russians uh, would put this out. Uh, I'll give the administration credit so far. They've stood up at the U.N. Security Council and not have let they've not let some of the more egregious uh, resolutions against Israel uh, go forward. But it, it is uh it's just not acceptable that we would tell an ally who's being attacked by a terrorist entity uh, that you must have a you must have a ceasefire. In fact, uh, what Israel is doing right now is uh, very effectively targeting the leadership of Hamas and, and Pish, the P uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Uh, these are two terror organizations. And if you look from a military perspective, Rob, at the targeting campaign yep. uh, that the Israelis are right now, they have reportedly been very, very effective at taking out major leaders of uh, this group, uh, of both of these terrorist groups. So they're, they're having quite a quite a few wins militarily. And, um, uh, and, they're, and they're, we fighting a, they're really they're really okay. fighting a, a tough battle because, you know, as we know, Hamas, they run and they hide behind kids, behind women, civilians. behind civilians. Right. That's what they do. And, and the message from the Biden administration is not so much a ceasefire to Israel. It's basically we just want you to sit there and take it. Because the people that are attacking you are hiding in ways that when you retaliate, it kills innocent people. And that's just a ridiculous statement and a ridiculous way to look at this thing. And that's the same way the U.N. looks at it. Morgan Ortega, uh, great to have you on. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. Good to see you as always. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.